Hello again guys, so this will be my first video covering the A-level papers since now I've actually done all of the current syllabus IGCSE, uh, you know, 15 mark questions. Um, so as we see, well this will be paper 2 of the October-November 2023 series. And yeah, first here we'll look at question 4, okay, which is the first pseudocode question. Right, it says we've got a global array, uh, it's, well, it's going to be called data, it's got 150 elements, right, starting at index 1, and yeah, that's going to be of type string. Right, then it says a function too many. Well, this will take two parameters, one being the search string, uh, and then two being an integer, which is the maximum value. Right, then what we have to do, we want to count the number of strings in the array that exactly match the search string. Right, then we return true if the count is greater than the maximum value, otherwise we return false. Um, and then yeah, it just says write pseudocode. Right, so what, I mean, basically then this is just linear search. Um, but rather than just returning true or false if we find it, uh, you know, we're just going to count how many we find. Um, and I guess, yeah, return true, you know, based on this condition. Uh, so, yeah, let me just go here then. And again, I mean, if you want to use this example code um, or this kind of test code, well, just go to the exam questions. Uh, yeah, scroll down to A level and then obviously, well, find this one here, right, 2023, October, November. Uh, yeah, question 4A. Um, okay, so well, let's just declare this. Um, I think they call it, uh, yeah, okay, it's called too many, right? Um, so it's going to be a function, right? It's, uh, yeah, let's call it too many. And then the first one, let's just say search, and this will be of type string. And in fact, let me just make that a little bigger. Uh, right, and then I guess the next one we can call max, right, or maximum. And then here, well, it's just going to return a Boolean. So then we just go returns Boolean. Uh, yeah, let's just end function like this. Now what we want to do, well we just want to do linear search, um, but I guess we're also going to need a count of how many we found. Uh, so I mean, let's just call it count, I guess that's simple. Uh, right, and then we, well, we're going to set that count equal to zero, right, then we can just have the for loop. Um, so let's say position, okay, this will start at one, and then well, either we can go like length of, uh, is it data? Okay, so we, yeah, we can say length data like this. But in the question, they actually told us, well, it's just, you know, 150 elements. Um, so, yeah, we can also directly just put 150. Uh, right, then let's just go next position. And then inside here, what we want to check, uh, we want to check, right, if the data, and then this will be our index position, right, if this is equal to the search string, uh, well, then what we want to do, we just want to increment the count. So we just go count, and then let's go count plus one. Um, right, then let's make sure just to end if. Uh, and then, yeah, that should be calculating the count correctly. And then I think all we need to do here, well, we can just have an if statement. So we'll just say, uh, what well, if count is greater than the max, I think then we return true. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, then we just return true. Um, right, I mean, else, well, we just return false. Um, okay, so I think that works, uh, but you know, we can also just simplify this. So we could have this if, you know, if return true or else return false. Um, but we could also just have it like this, where we just go return and then count is greater than max. Uh, because while well, this statement will evaluate to a Boolean, right? So if it's true, it's going to return true, right? If it's false, it's going to return false. Um, obviously, this is a shorter way of doing it. But uh, yeah, maybe you like to be explicit and you know see the if else uh, yeah if else statement. Right, I mean, well, let's just test this to see if it works. Uh, so we'll go too many. Right, and then let's say here, I mean, we can look at for example Windows. Um, and I've actually done this before, so I think Windows there was three. So let's say if we search two, uh, well that should say uh, that should say true. Right, but then if we search three, well that should say uh, false because here it has to be greater than, okay, not greater than or equal to. Um, and yeah, okay, so we see this seems to work. Okay, so if we move on to part B, it says the global array is changed to a 2D array organized as 100, uh, 150 rows by two columns. And yeah, here is the pseudocode declaration. Uh, right, the algorithm for the function in part A is changed and strings will only be counted if both of the following conditions are true. So one, the current row has to be an even number and also the search string exactly matches the value in either column. Um, and then it just says write pseudocode to check these conditions. Uh, and then it says, well, the row index is contained in the variable row and the search string in the variable search. 
Um, I mean, so here, well, basically, we just need to write the if statement, right? Because, yeah, when it says, you know, pseudocode to check, uh, well, that's just going to be the if statement. Um, so, well, if, if we go up here, you know, I've, well, I've got the new 2D array, okay, it's got the data, um, which, again, you can also get by clicking on the exam questions. Uh, right, so, I mean, I've just changed this because I think before I called it, well, pause, like position, um, but yeah, I've just changed it to use the variables that they've said. Uh, now, the first one, then, we want to check if the row is an even number. Now, the way we can do that, um, well, if we just go here, we're going to go row mod 2. And we're just going to check that that's equal to zero. Um, and yeah, let me just put an answer there. Uh, right, and I mean, the reason we do this is because, well, if row is two, then two mod two is going to be zero. Uh, let's say if row is four, well, four mod two is also going to be zero. Um, now, if it's an odd number, let's say three, well, three mod two is going to be one. Okay, so that's how we can check, you know, even or odd. Uh, yeah, because I guess, right, even numbers will be, uh, well, yeah, an even number mod two will be zero and an odd number, uh, yeah, an odd number mod two will be one. And, you know, we can also check for, let's say, like, uh, you know, multiples of seven. So if we do something, uh, you know, like row mod seven equals zero, well, that means it's gonna be, uh, well, I guess, yeah, row seven, row 14, you know, 21, um, yeah, and, you know, etc. cetera. Uh, all right, so I think it says, well, we either want this condition, uh, right, or we want, well, yeah, all we want the data to be either in column one or in column two. Uh, so the way we're going to do that, well, it's also going to be the row, but then we also just want to say column one. Uh, right, and then I'm just going to copy this. I'll also put it inside brackets um, because, yeah, we're just, well, we're uh, basically we're saying this condition has to be true, right? And then what, well, and, yeah, either this condition or this condition. And here, let's just change this to column two. All right, and I think I counted this. Uh, I think there should be four windows that, you know, where these conditions are true. Um, so yeah, this one should say true, this one should say false. And yeah, okay, so this seems to work. All right, so guys, I mean, just a quick video, but hopefully it was useful. And yeah, in the next video, I'll cover the next pseudocode questions from this paper.